Hi, my name's Peter Cawthon, and when I was in radio, which I was from, I think, about 2003 to 2005 or 6, I had the opportunity to meet George Carlin. If comedians came through the area, it was usually the radio station that was responsible for it, and as part of the radio lineup, I got to hang out with Carlin and go out on stage with the other radio people and introduce him. But the introducing matters way less to me than the fact that I got to talk to him for about 45 minutes. To me, at very least, George Carlin was a very kind person, very generous with his time. We had a discussion about his career that started in radio. The thing that put him on the map originally was the seven words you can't say on the radio. Now, he shared wisdom and experience with me that I wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. It stayed with me for many years and has influenced what I care about, what is important to me in terms of what I critique. But there's one thing he said to me that stuck with me more than anything else. He said to me, Peter, person that I just met right now, if there's one thing I hope never happens, it's that somebody uses artificial intelligence to resurrect me and make a comedy special after I die. That's a joke. He didn't really say that. He did say a lot of other things. Uh, that was a real conversation that really actually meant a lot to me, but uh, that didn't, that, that, that wasn't part of it. I will say he had this like liver spot on the top of his ear, like right here, and I hyper fixated on it. I could not look away from it. And I was so concerned that I ruined the conversation for myself. Fortunately, I remember this event pretty well. And I am talking about it because uh, someone has used AI to resurrect Carlin for a comedy special after he's dead. <laughs> and oh boy, has it made people mad. The George Carlin AI stand-up is worse than you can imagine. As a longtime Carlin fan, I was morbidly curious, but I wish I had never clicked the link. You know, the kind of thing that you would say if, like, you accidentally clicked onto, like, a beheading video. Yeah, this guy, Matthew Galt, uh, he's a pansy. The George Carlin AI stand-up is worse than you could imagine, but how? How is it worse than you can imagine? Well, according to the first sentence in the article, it's worse than you could possibly imagine. This paragraph talks about what it is and who it is. This AI called Dudesy. At the start of the special, Dudesy intones that it devoured the work of the long-dead comedic genius and rendered it into a terrible, hour-long, that word, of Carlin's work called I'm Glad I'm Dead. Which, what the fuck is that word? Facsimile. Facsimile. An exact copy, especially of written- it's a- it's plagiarism shit. Are we only going to talk about plagiarism from now on? Is that it? Is that all that it's gonna be? Carlin's family did not give Dudesy permission to create the special, and his daughter, Kelly, publicly denounced it on Twitter. I am so tired of this. Ow, that hurt more than it should have. Ow. Oh, that was stupid. If there's a mark on my head the rest of the video, you know why. <laughs> so Kelly Carlin has this to say. My dad spent a lifetime perfecting his craft from his very human life, brain, and imagination. No machine will ever replace his genius. These AI-generated products are clever attempts at trying to recreate a mind that will never exist again. Let's let the artist's work speak for itself. Humans are so afraid of the void that we can't let what has fallen into it stay there. Here's an idea. How about we give some actual living comedians a listen to? But if you want to listen to a genuine George Carlin, he has 14 specials that you can find anywhere. This speaks to a concern, but we're again back to this idea of genuine versus fake creativity. This remixed crap versus the real thing, which is produced from this incredible, irreplaceable human individual. But again, we're not talking about what's bad about it. The AI comedian, which is not very funny and only sounds vaguely like Carlin, spends the hour riffing on various topics like Taylor Swift, U.S. gun culture, and of course, hyping the supposedly revolutionary potential of AI technology. So neither Matthew Galt nor Kelly Carlin actually speak to why the special is bad. And I'm going to say that 
Although I don't agree with everything said in the special, I think the reason is because it's actually pretty good. And I know that some people are going to be against that. Some people are always going to want a real uh, flesh and blood human being observing the world and telling jokes about it. And I get that. I really do. But if you can keep an open mind, I think I can make a case for at least one comedian we can all agree is better in AI form, Bill Cosby. <laughs> With AI, Bill Cosby, you get all of the Cosby jokes with none of the Cosby rapes. I'm sorry. That's funny. In fact, the George Carlin AI special is better than almost every comedy special I've watched this year. It's certainly better than Dave Chappelle's. The Dreamer, it's just Nanette for people who don't like Nanette. So I would recommend watching it, although I will say, uh, if you don't like tumors, there's some AI-generated tumors in it, and I, I wasn't big on that. Uh... But, I mean, it was good. Shane Gillis' special was better, but, like, again, Chappelle's wasn't. Ricky Gervais's wasn't. A lot of high-profile comedian specials this year weren't that good. And this, it was good. It did do a whole lot to promote AI, and this is why I'm making a documentary on AI called Plato is a Bitch, AI and Bomber Guy. You see, it seems like the people who are telling you that AI is great, and make no mistake, that's exactly what this is. It's not an AI deciding that AI is great to pimp it at you. That's not how AI works. If you get something good out of AI, it is not because you said, hey, make me a George Carlin joke. I don't know how long it took him to generate this AI special, but it was a long time because they had to generate a script for it. And as somebody who does utilize AI basically to argue... Actually, I used to use Twitter a lot to put, like, the most salacious version of my arguments up and let people, like, get angry about it. And I would take that and I would use it to refine my argument. I do way less of that now. I do that to AI. But as somebody who does that, I know for a fact you cannot just ask AI to generate stuff and have it give you good stuff in return. If you want to get good stuff, you're responsible for it. And even then, it's not usable. You can't really use AI shit. Like, you can tell when people use AI shit. It's not great. And there were several instances during this special that I was like, uh, that's that. And to some extent, Kelly Carlin isn't completely wrong. My dad spent a lifetime perfecting his craft from his very human life, brain, and imagination. No machine will ever replace his genius. People like this want to imagine this idea that the machine works completely differently from how the human brain works. And it doesn't. Every single bit of creativity is remixed and reimagined from everything that came before. It is not a fundamentally different process to take in a bunch of information, jumble it up, and spit it back out in an approximation of what came before, except for with differences. The actual difference between the AI process and the human process is actually the data set. In socialism, utopian and scientific, Frederick Engels spends a bunch of time delineating the difference between a metaphysical approach and a dialectical approach. The metaphysical approach is a finished, ended, dead, lifeless piece of information in repose, an unchanging thing, something that is useful. Something that one can study and get something out of it, however, does not mirror the way things work in life. That is the metaphysical approach, again, according to Engels. And that's artificial intelligence. The data set artificial intelligence is pulling from is a collection of finished works. It is at time of generation, when you input a prompt, at that time, unmoving, unflexible, complete and in repose, it is complete or as complete as it ever will be. Certainly one can add data to the data set afterwards, but it is ultimately a disconnected collection of finished works. On the other hand, a human being's data set is a collection of endless streams of new phenomena, sensory input, sight, hearing, taste, touch, feelings, memories, 
existence, experience, it's all connected and in motion. It's also dialectical because there are opposing forces that exist, conflicts that without there is no defining thing. For instance, without bad, there is no good. A machine might be able to glean a lot of context from a finished work. However, it's a finished work. Even this video is a finished work. All of the things that have led me to this conclusion are impossible to express to you because they are my entire life. It's completely impossible for AI to be that. And that isn't to denigrate AI. It's just, I had a conversation with George Carlin. I know a lot about how he was feeling at the time. He told me he was nostalgic for lots of places in his life. He was thankful for where he was, that he had gotten to the place that he was when he was performing, when he was touring around, doing what he loved. He talked about lots of different experiences with me, things that weren't funny, things the audience might not be interested in. And that was George Carlin on that day at that moment. Could be different another day. He could have a bizarre opinion that came up that just has absolutely nothing consistent or in common with any of his previous work. If he had been alive today and he had been able to do a comedy special, would he have said those things? I doubt it because the AI generating it was ultimately just an amalgamation of his finished works and the person prompting the AI has a completely different set of experiences from him. But because of that, it actually is something new. It's just not informed by all of the things that we need for it to be a complete human creation. That doesn't mean it's bad. It's actually pretty good. While I certainly didn't enjoy it as much as a Carlin special, I enjoyed it more than most comedian specials this year. I mean, basically all they're trying to do is find the right people to make mad to make everyone else happy. Kind of a dumb strategy at this point. On one hand, the fact that it's so funny is a compliment to Carlin. It is very derivative of George Carlin. It very much takes on the delivery, the topics, a lot of the stuff that George Carlin would say. But there's clearly also an agenda. The people who own the AI, train it, make this, get input. And in that input, they are trying to normalize the use of their services, of their platforms, the platforms that they own and that they control. If we're going to come up with anything meaningful in discussions about AI, I think we have to stop talking about what is real creativity and what's fake creativity. Because everything new came out of the old. And I think that's just a fundamentally human thing. That's why I've been how I've been about plagiarism. Every plagiarist who copies something, do you know what they're doing? They're making a decision as to what is worth repeating, what is important to them. That is expression, whether you like it or not. In the world we live in today, we don't get the opportunity to learn in private anymore. You have to post it. So when you fuck up, it's in public now. Through the years, most people have learned by plagiarizing. Their early, very derivative works are that. And so if that's bad, if that's evil, a thing that nobody's allowed to do, no one will ever get good at anything ever again. I feel like I have to stop because if I keep going, I'm just going to make a feature length video of me saying everything that's in my documentary. Um, I have a lot more that I want to cover and I want you to stay tuned because the documentary is probably a month or two off. I wish it was faster, but I don't think I can work faster, but that's all I have to say for today. Uh, don't forget to like comment, subscribe, maybe become a patron. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a nice day.